Welcome back everybody to another Motobot video where today we're going to be taking a look at another custom bike, this lovely Ducati Scrambler 1100 by Dabolix Engineering. And again this footage is from the London Motorcycle Show a few weeks ago and I've got to say this is one of my favourite bikes at the show. It's pretty understated but that's what I like about it, all of the clutter of the stock bike has been removed and it's left a really svelte looking cafe racer style bike. In the last video we went over the FTR1200S Race Replica Edition by Indian and your opinions were pretty divided on this bike. Some people liked the overall kind of beefiness and the fact that it had 120 horsepower but then again some people really didn't like the stylings of the bike or the colour and a lot of people didn't like the tail end for some reason. So if you haven't seen that video click the link in the description below. And as always, let me know what you think of today's bike in the comments below. I love to hear from you guys and really enjoy the conversations we have around these bikes. Anyway, let's take a look at this extremely tidy custom scrambler. Now I've had to do quite a bit of comparison between my footage of this bike and the photos of the stock 1100 scrambler to try and get an idea of all the changes, so I'll do my best to work through all of them if I can. Starting right at the front of the bike, the brakes look to be stock and that's a theme that runs through the rest of the equipment on this bike. It doesn't look like a great deal of changes have been made in the performance department, possibly owing to the fact that the bike was turned around in a few weeks in time for last year's Bike Shed Show as a commission by Ducati. So it's definitely much more of an exercise in styling than performance enhancement, but let's assume that it's already a pretty good bike underneath and the removal of quite a few bulky parts will definitely have helped save some weight. But back to the brakes, which are 320mm twin discs with Brembo radially mounted calipers and that's complemented by cornering ABS as standard on the 1100 Scrambler. The 10 spoke wheels also look to be straight off the standard bike, but the tyres have been swapped out. As standard you get the tracker style Pirelli MT60 RS, but this bike has more of a cafe racer feel to it and therefore you've got the more road orientated Bridgestone Battleaxe BT023s on it. The forks also look unchanged as the stock bike comes with 45mm upside down Marzocchis which are fully adjustable so there's no real need for improvement there. But a much leaner front mudguard has been fabricated from aluminium and painted in that super bright Ducati red. Moving upwards, the cockpit is where some of the best work has been done for me, with everything paired back to make it really neat and sleek. Clip-ons have been fitted to give it that cafe style along with a fairing which really distinguishes the bike. The clip-ons meant the original bar mount holes would have been visible, so this replacement black anodized top yoke was produced by Fastec Racing in Suffolk. The fairing on the other hand was handmade in-house as a bespoke piece for this bike and it's one of my favourite parts of the build. But it's also kind of functional in that it hides so much of the usual cockpit clutter away. It makes the front end look super minimal from almost any angle with the clock and the brake and clutch reservoirs all tucked inside. And of course having no mirrors keeps the lines of the front end clean and low. The standard switch gear remains but as I've said this is more of a restyling than changing the bike underneath. The headlight is the stock LED unit with daytime running light but it looks the part on this bike and the cross brace with the little Ducati logo almost looks like headlight tape. But then again the white paint around the headlight does a good job of making the whole thing look like a race number. Indicators are tucked in underneath using Moto Gadget's tiny M Blaze pins. They're not that far apart so I'm not that confident of them passing their MOT but they're there and that's what counts. The steel tank has been painted entirely Ducati red and although the aluminium side panels are there to reference the paint job on the original Ducati Scrambler, painting them red has helped with simplifying the lines of the bike. There's some nice subtle white logos on the tank and the filler cap has been painted black and that's something that's been used to good effect elsewhere on the bike. The stock bike looks a little bit busy for me with lots of brushed metal parts, so painting the radiator guard, side panel and exhaust heat shield black makes the bike look really clean against the black motor. Of course the Scrambler 1100 is designed to take a pillion, but let's assume this custom isn't from the look of the seat. That's meant that they've been able to do away with the huge foot peg mounts and have fitted some much neater Rizoma rear sets instead. There could also be a necessity in order for the rider to reach down to those clip-ons. The seat on the stock scrambler is quite a bulbous looking thing, 
but despite keeping the standard subframe they've done an awesome job of slimming things down with a beautifully finished seat and another piece of bespoke metalwork in the yellow tail unit. You can see the lines of the original seat on the side of the subframe but in a way they almost look like a feature. The exhaust headers are stock but after you get past the cat there must have been some custom pipe built here to get that HP Core silencer right up against the underside of the subframe. It looks really awesome from the back. And lastly you've got some neat little tail lights and indicators. Assuming nothing has been done to the engine internals, the bike will have the same 85 horsepower as the standard 1100 Scrambler, although the silencer might improve that a little bit. And as I've said earlier, I'd imagine this bike's a bit lighter because of some of the parts that have been removed or swapped out. Overall, I think it's just a masterclass in simplicity and removing clutter to pair things right back to the basic form of the bike. It looks much, much leaner, in fact almost as lightweight as the 800 Scrambler. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this then please hit subscribe and then hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Yep.